Okay. Hi, Nell. Hi, Shanta. Um, so thank you for joining me for this. And thank you for agreeing to contribute to the anthology Sign and Breath uh, through Etruscan Press. And as you already know, we're most interested in what makes a page sing. And so this is a very interesting anthology in that we want to go against the boundaries of how to define the word on the page. Um, and so I would like to start maybe, yeah, you, you chose the question. You wanted to talk about voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I I'm so that question resonated yeah. with me the most. Um, and I'm curious because you're also, you're also a visual artist, you're a painter. So I'm so curious about, and you write and how voice intermingles with that. And so, yeah, why don't you um, tell me more? Well, you know, I give it obviously some thought with this question, what is voice? And there's a, there's an understanding for me of what voice is. And then there is kind of like the other side of what voice really is, right? So, but I think there's a reason why I picked that question because I find voice very attra attractive. It's one of the things that makes me attracted to a person, just the voice, right? So it's, I mean, it starts there for me, the voice. It's more important than how a person looks. So now I'm talking about just literally about voices, right? I'm starting off there. But, but for me, it's so important that I, I find the voice attractive, especially when it comes to the gender that I'm attracted to, for instance, right? Because Otherwise, I'm not going to be interested in the communication. This is it for me. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time. Uh, he's going to have a hard time keeping me interested in what he's talking about. If the voice is not something that I find appealing. And when I say voice, I don't just mean voice. I mean, first, yes, it's the voice. It's the tone of the voice, right? But then it also includes speech, the delivery of the speech. These two things have to go together. Like you can have a really nice voice, but your speech is all over the place. You're like, you're not delivering speech and thought nicely, then that's not going to do it either for me. So these two things need to be like, when, whenever somebody asks me, do you have any fetishes? And I say, voice. That's you know, it's it's it, it 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 does my head in that much, literally. You know, it either turns me on or it turns me off. Or yes, sometimes it just does nothing to me, and that's that's wasted because it's like, well, it you know, if only it did something to you know, and it only did something for me, right? So I think that's why that question, uh, that question already was the question that I picked because for me, like Personally, I actually trained how to use my voice. And I don't think that, I, I don't think a lot of people are aware of it besides actors and singers and stuff like that. I think the general, you know, obviously I'm generalizing, but the general public just uses their voice. They just use it, right? Um, Unless you're someone that goes on stage and you know that kind of stuff, yes, of course you're very aware of, of, of how you use your voice. So I find it to be um, uh, like you know you're not people can actually use their voices better, but they're not aware of that. They just they're just speaking, right? So if something sounds unappealing, it can actually be turned into something appealing if you actually pay attention to it and know you know, like which tone to use your voice at, right? Because if I didn't, if I didn't watch myself, I could sound a lot higher pitched, 
and that's how I used to sound. I used to sound very girlish, you know, and people were shocked that I was the age that I was because I sounded like a, like a, like a teenager. And I knew why. It was because it was the tone of my voice. So I started paying attention to it. And so now I speak in, in this tone. But it was only because I was aware and it's a choice. I also see how languages decide the tone of the delivery. And so certain languages are deeper. And then, you know, certain languages are just very high pitched. And what happens is, even when they speak English, they still use that language to speak English. So it's, kind of, it's sounding really like wrong. Like, you know, maybe sometimes it's only ultra feminine, but it's actually because it's English was the second language, right? So, but it's the wrong tone, right? So for me, tone and delivery of speech, it's something that's, I find very appealing. It's mm -hmm. more important than how a person looks actually for me. Well, and it's funny because I'm thinking about how you're describing and starting with like what would attract you to a person. Is this what translates for you into what would be put on a page? Like when you take that voice or the concept of voice and writing, how does that, and how do you think of that as a writer? Like, Obviously, or, when I think, when I, when I write, when I write, I, I am, so as a writer, of course, I'm, I, I always keep in mind how it's going to be read. Right? I'm not just writing for myself. While I, while I am writing and I am keeping, I have a, I have a voice in my head. It's not necessarily my voice, but it is a voice of speech that is going that you know there's someone reading it so i need to know where to put the commas and the pauses because that's how i want the person to read and it's obviously never a squeaky voice that i hear it's a it's a you know uh it's not any particular voice but it's a voice that is it's just kind of stable. <laughs> I don't know how to actually say it, right? But it's just a stable voice. Um, and I think it usually is a man's voice that I hear. It's not a female's voice that I hear. It's funny. It's not a face. There's no face, but it's, I definitely don't hear a, female, a female's voice, even though, you know, I'm writing. And it's, it's always, you know, if I say it, I'm writing about somebody and it's a he, yet I am hearing a, a, a he in my, in my head reading it. <laughs> it's, it's strange, right? <laughs> um, but yeah. So, you know, for me, that's like the literal, uh, the, just on a very general thing about voice. But then the question about what is voice? Now, even that I find has got many different answers. It's not just one answer, even just for me, right? What is voice? Voice is thought. Voice is feelings. Voice is of course, opinions and beliefs. But, you know, to, to voice something takes courage. I, I feel, right? To voice something, whether it is written or spoken, takes courage. It takes bravery to voice something. Um, because especially when, when it comes to, it doesn't take courage or bravery when it comes to opinions, right? Or beliefs, because like everyone has an opinion and that's, you just have one, that's it. So it's not, a, it's not a big deal because that opinion is of something beyond yourself. So that doesn't take much courage or bravery 
that that just takes maybe talent to write it in a in a nice way or or speak it in a nice way, right? But when it is about oneself, when it's about feelings or experiences, um, relationships, life, ex, ex, you know, experiences, heart, heart stuff, the heart stuff, and something is voiced either in written form or in spoken form. I think that takes a lot of courage and bravery because what what it does is it exposes the person, right? So vulnerability. Now, the the person who has exposed it now is vulnerable because there's something about you that you've just shared with with the world or whoever the, you know the audience was. So, I think it takes courage to to do that. Um, there are many things that I would like to write about, many, certain topics, you know, certain experiences on certain topics which are actually important to hear, but I shy from writing them. And the reason why I don't write about them is because I, it's like sharing a secret about yourself. You know, and if you don't share it, they don't know about it, about you. And, you know, once you put something out there, it's really up to the interpretation of everyone reading it. So that, that it can be, you know, there is judgment that is going to happen. And, uh, and, you know, you have no control over how people are going to perceive you. Right. And it's the worst when you're already feeling vulnerable. You're perceived in the wrong way now, you know. Uh, so I I shy away from writing and talking about certain things that actually I feel very strongly about, strongly in the sense that they're not experiences that happen to everyone. You know, they are you know, these things are just things that happen to the minority of us. Even if I can even call it a minority, it could be even less than a minority. But a, a lot of people are affected by it. A lot of people might contemplate it. Uh, but I've had first-hand experience of it. And I would like to talk about it, but I don't have the courage to talk about it because... It's not I don't have the courage to talk about it, but more so I don't have the courage to deal with what is going to come back. That, <laughs> right? Because I know that is the minute I, I, it's out there, it's out of my control. Do you right? find that with what you're saying about kind of biting your own tongue to say, okay, I'm not going to talk about these things, but your audience is global right? Like you, you have audience, like for the stuff that you put out for either voices of yeah. men or like, do you find, do you, and living in Malaysia, like, do you find that there's a different reception depending on who is living where and, and has that dictated what you're putting out and what Definitely. you feel will, like how you put your voice out? For sure. You want to talk Definitely. a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I used to think when I was younger, I used to think that uh, people being culturally different, there was no such thing like, you know, that's just like, because I had been in relationships with uh, men from various places, right? And I didn't really feel there was such a difference between us, regardless of where we came from, our ages, stuff like that. But then... Uh, over time, I, 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 I did see it, I did experience it. And it didn't even have to be in a relationship anymore. It had to be in a country because I also lived in different countries. And so, and so I experienced how culture dictated to a quite a great extent the mental capacity for understanding things. The maturity, the you know, uh, I mean, it's without a doubt 
it's unfortunate, but it's without a doubt, like we are very aware that, you know, someone in their early 20s in the West is a lot more mentally matured than someone in Asia. It's, it's weird, right? It's, uh, it's the upbringing, you know, it's the upbringing. Here it is very um, sheltered. There's a lot of governing that the parents do. You're not actually like, oh, I'll just give you an example. Like over there, a lot of parents in the West, I mean, you know, they expect you to move your ass out when you're 18 or 19 you know like you're out like you need to to, to start go live your life you know you need to work you need to find a part-time job blah 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 stuff like that over in asia it's not like that you know an, an 18 year old or 19 year old or whatever it is you know a, a young adult only works because they need to because the parents can't afford to not because they want to right now oh, that makes a lot of sense yeah so yeah. there's a lot so and you're you know a lot of people still remain living at home mm -hmm. even when they're like in their 20s 30s well yeah. and it's a different i mean what you're pointing out to and we're we're close to wrapping up so what what you're also pointing out to is just the the whole idea of self and voice in different contexts too. and also yeah. and also how they're going to receive those so, things so yeah so, you know just to kind of like quickly backtrack mm -hmm. and so that's why that's 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 part of it right because of where i'm located to answer your question yes that's a big thing because if i was in the west I think that I would have more freedom to write about the things that I wanted to write because people will be more receptive. People are just more open to that kind of thing. Over here, it's not, you know, it's, it's, but I, I, I actually want to end with something about voice, right? I think it's, it's, a, it's a big contradiction for me, but, you know, I do see that first and foremost, life is a contradiction, it's, right? And so there is no way that I am not a contradiction myself. Like, you know, I'm going to say something and say this, and then I'm going to say that, that just contradicts. Like, that's the law of life almost, right? So while I said just now that it takes, for me, it takes a, a bravery to share something, to voice something about oneself, I actually also think that it, it takes more bravery to actually remain silent. Because in silence, there is actually a lot more words. The unspoken word, right? For me, the unspoken word is a lot more piercing than the words that are spoken. When you don't have a word, for it when you don't have full sentences when you know that whatever that you're feeling the minute it comes out from your mouth no matter how eloquent you are or articulate you are it is going to feel that emotion that you're feeling you rather offer silence right because in that silence there's actually so much voice there's actually words right but there actually, there's just no words anymore for it. And so the act of actually being, choosing to be silent uh, 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 against actually speaking, the voice to speak about it, I actually think it takes more bravery to actually remain silent. <laughs> I love you know, that. So it's, like, so it's, it's quite yeah. a contradiction because I know it takes bravery to actually voice, you know, to share oneself, but... Hmm. Uh, on the other hand, I, I feel that it's easy. It's, it's kind of easier to, to speak, but it's harder to remain quiet when something means so much to you or you feel so deeply about something and yet you remain quiet because there are just no words to voice it. We're going to end on that. 
because that is a yeah. powerful ending. Thank you yeah. for your time. Sure. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>